Okay, I think we'll get started. So today we're going to do the classic uh, analog of a Hello World program for the PIC kit, or for the PIC 10F uh, 200. And so we're going to just blink an LED. Now first of all, we'll just get the LED to turn on, uh, and then secondly, we'll get it to blink. And here we're going to learn a bit about how to just hook up the PIC 10F200, both to its power supply and then its outputs to, in this case, uh, an LED circuit. We will need to program the PIC uh, 10F200 with the PIC kit 5, or whatever programmer that you use. And so this will get us a chance to see how that works. And then uh, this will involve using a really important idea called the del a delay loop. And this is going to be used in many, many of our uh, experiments uh, when we learn about the PIC uh, 10F200. So let me talk just a little bit more about a delay loop. So uh, as you know, the clock speed of the PIC 10F200 is 4 megahertz, and uh, the instruction cycle then is one fourth of that, so 1 megahertz. And so if we just turn on and off an LED, at that speed, we would never be able to see it. And we want to introduce then a uh, delay. And in assembly, there's no sleep or uh, uh, time delay uh, function that you can call like there is in, um, say, Python or something like that. So we have to do it uh, with the assembly code, and we'll see how to do that. So uh, what we can do is uh, enter into a go-to loop with a decrement counter. So we need something to count down and then when it hits zero, we break out of the loop. Otherwise, we'd be stuck in the loop forever, which would then be too long of a delay. So we want to uh, break out. Now, we know that the maximum integer that we can store is 255. And so this, the biggest this loop can be is 255, which is still going to complete way too fast to do things on the second scale that we might want to do in the laboratory. So what we can do is nest loops. So we have an outer loop and an inner loop, and we have two, two counters, and they this one counts down, and then it breaks into the outer loop and resets this and just cycles. So this loop will loop through one cycle, then the outer loop will go, this will go through another cycle, and so we get this nested loop behavior, which prolongs the delay. Now for us, if we want to get into the second range, or maybe even many seconds, we're going to need a, a triple loop. So this just is a, a triple nested loop, uh, an inner loop, an outer loop, and, a, and an, an outer outer loop. Now, we, uh, the way, there's many ways to set up these loops. The way that I've done it for all of our work here on, on learning about the PIC 10F200 is the, the loops are symmetric. So I will send in one value, like 50. That means each loop will complete 50 cycles. Other ways to do it is to have the inner loop always be 255, and then you control the outer loop. Uh, the inner loops each being 255, and then you control the outer loop. But uh, this this adds a little bit more versatility, I think, although it's, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. Uh, but we'll be able to use this in all of our experiments, and we'll be able to just copy and paste, so it's very portable in that regard. Now, they'll often come in pairs, so if we want to blink an LED, we want to turn it on and turn it off. We want to turn it on, set the time length for our delay, so um, if it's, uh, say, 50, then the delay would be essentially 50 cubed number of cycles. Now, that's not exactly right, and I'm not going to go through how to uh, explicitly calculate the delay for our purposes, we don't care too much if we're exactly right with the delay. And so the numbers that I'll be giving you in the, in the code are more empirical based. I've just determined how long each of these numbers give in terms of a delay. Um, so, but basically it's, it's a cubed number of your number cubed. Uh, and so we'll give it a number, it'll delay, then we'll turn off the LED, then we need to give that number again so that it delays. Otherwise, it'll just come right back off, turn off and turn on again, and we wouldn't even see it turn on and turn off. 
Now, if we give it the same number, then we'll have a 50-50 duty cycle. On and off will be the same. But the nice thing about this is we can give it different numbers. We can send different numbers into the delay function. And um, in, in that regard, we can have, say, the light on for 90% of the time and then a quick off or vice versa or whatever. All right, so let's, uh, let's go see how the, all this is, is done then. All right, so um, here we have our PIC 10F200, our PIC kit 5. Uh, it's not hooked up yet. It has its wires ready to be uh, hooked up. Uh, I've positioned uh, the PIC in this breadboard, and all we need is uh, the high voltage, the five voltage, the ground. We need uh, the LED circuit, so an LED and then a resistor over here uh, to control the current uh, coming off of GP0. So if we look at the pin out for, uh, or the pin, the, the, the pin diagram for the PIC, we see that GP0 is right here. Now, we can look at the PIC controller and we need to connect the different outputs of the PIC kit to the PIC. For example, uh, pin one needs to go to the master clear and pin two needs to go to the five volts. So as we look at this now, I've got different wires running from the various positions on the pick to where the pick kit plugs in. And so I'll plug that actually into the board here. And right now we're not seeing anything because we haven't done any programming yet. So let's go ahead and look at our program. And so this is a simple program to blink the uh, the LED. Uh, this uh, step up here, this is all boilerplate information that comes before the start of the main program. And we've talked about that in some other videos, but essentially it, it turns off the watchdog timer, uh, turns off the master clear reset, and then imports the correct instructions for the PIC kit, uh, for the PIC uh, 10F200. Uh, also sets the program counter and to start at main and so on. So we have uh, all that initial information. And then as I've been doing uh, in our practice programming, uh, we start with main and then we'll put some stuff here and then we'll start the main loop. And this will almost always be the same. Uh, it's, a hand, it's handy to have this because then you can just copy and paste it. The first part puts uh, in binary form uh, just uh, it's helpful to be in binary form here because it's easier to see what you're doing. Uh, this is the number that goes into the working register. So right now it's a literal, just a binary. It's going into the working register. And the last four bits are what tell us, are we programming the PIC so that the general purpose IOs are acting as an input or an output? If it's a one, then it's an input. If it's a zero, then it's an output. Now for our program today, all that we worry about is the GP0, which is the zeroth bit here. And so we're gonna set that as a zero, meaning making it an output. The others are set to inputs, it doesn't matter. They can be inputs or outputs, except for GP3, which is always stuck as being an input. It can't be an output. Now the command tris, uh, tris six will put the values of the working register, so this binary up here into the TRIS register. And so that will control the input or output for GP one through three. Uh, we don't need this today, but we'll keep it in this boilerplate. And we need to have another literal binary here. And uh, this is to control the options register that will help us choose whether we want to have the 
pin two, GP2 be the external clock or be an IO. And we're probably gonna, we're always gonna want it to be an IO and we'll just use the internal clock of the PIC. So this, and then followed by the option command, which, which loads the working register into the options register, we uh, set GP2 as the, uh, as a IO. All right, but again, for today, that's not gonna matter. So we enter our main loop here. Uh, and so the first thing that we're gonna run into is this turn on part of it. And we're gonna use the bit set uh, command here to set or bring to five volts GP0. And then we're gonna just go to turn on. And so this is just gonna be an infinite loop here holding GP0 at five volts. And we won't go any further at this point. Uh, you'll see, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll comment this out and then we'll go into the blink later. So let's just try to get this to run. Now the first thing we should always do is uh, build and make sure we get a successful build here, which we do. Uh, but now we can use any of the, either of these here to program the pick. So I'm just gonna run the main program and we're gonna get an error here uh, because well, we get a couple of things here. So this this is just a reminder that uh, you want to uh, make sure that your pick can handle the voltage you're giving it. And so in this case, uh, five volts, and that's fine for the, the pick. Uh, other microcontrollers that you might be programming with this IDE, you might need a 3.3 volts and you could damage the controller. So I'm gonna click, let's not show this again. This would come up every time that you try to write this. Okay. Now, we get a failure here, and it says the target does not have a supply. So I don't have the power supply plugged in. Now there's two things we can do here. We can power it with the pick, with the pick kit itself. So let's do that first. So you click over here on pick kit five, and up will pop the properties. Uh, then you choose pick kit five, and over here we choose power, the power option. And power target with pick kit five that's unchecked, we would check that and then apply and hit okay. Now when we run this, uh, it should work. So let's go ahead and run this. And um, we're connecting to the programmer. And we see now it's programmed and we're getting a constant uh, turn on of GP zero as we had anticipated. Now let's, uh, Let's go ahead and turn this back off. And, uh, whoops. So I wanna go to pick kit five, and then I wanna go to uh, power, and I'm gonna just turn that off. Apply that. Double check this again, so this should give us an error. Oh, let's see. Connecting to programmer error, and then uh, we don't have our uh, LED on. But what I'll do now is I will add um, the power supply. And so uh, the reason it turned on here is because we, we failed to, it failed to program. And so it just had the last program in it. And so now that we've supplied the power, it turns on. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and run this and it'll re, rerun. And now it should work uh, because it, it is getting its own power. And so the programming is complete and this turned on. We didn't really see anything happen because it was already on to begin with. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and comment out these. And now we will enter the blink and here we will now call our delay function. So here's our delay function as I talked about on the board. We've got uh, three loops. We're storing the number in three of the memory addresses, uh, one zero, one one, and one two. And we are now going to turn on our uh, GP zero, so apply five volts to GP zero. That should turn the LED on. Then we're gonna move 53, the number 53, this, the, the base 10 number 53. Uh, and this is a roughly uh, one hertz. And so again, this is not um, 
a calculated number. This is an empirical number that I've gotten for these. Uh, so roughly speaking, uh, 153,000 divided by the number cubed that you put in here will give the, the, fr the, the frequency. Uh, so this will call the delay, then we will turn off, and then turn back on, or sorry, turn off, send to a delay, and this will be an even or a symmetric delay here, so we'll put a 53 here, and once that delay is done, it will go back to blink, turn this on, and it'll start all over again. So let's go ahead and, and run this, and we should see this now start to blink, and it's blinking uh, at approximately one hertz. Uh, note here, let me take out the controller, turn this off. Now it's it's programmed, so this, this now you can take this uh, chip anywhere, and as long as you supply the power, it will run what was programmed. You know, and it, all this will do is blink at about a, a rate of a second. But let me put this back in here, and uh, let's go ahead and let's change this number here now. So let's try 30. And so now we would be blinking at about 153,000 divided by 30 cubed, which I think is about six, uh, six hertz or seven hertz. So let's give that a try. And we see a faster, a faster blink rate. Finally, we can make this asymmetric. So let's put a 60 here. So this will be uh, on for a long time and then off for a short time. So let's give that a try. And so we see we can control the duty cycle here. And this is something that's really important in, well, controlling the, say, the brightness of an LED if we make this uh, Fast. Well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's um, change this to three and this to three, and this should be on. We shouldn't notice this blink. I don't think. Yep. So it's on. Well, now if I increase the off duty cycle a little bit. So let me turn this to one and this to three. Let me let me see if this looks dimmer. Well, maybe a little bit. I'll. Make that a little bigger. Yeah, a little dimmer. And now if I switch these around, 5 and 1, this should be brighter. And so we're controlling the duty cycle, or this is a, called pa, uh, pulse width modulation. And so this is something that can be used for controlling brightness or controlling uh, the speed of a motor, a very common thing to do with this. And so this asymmetric delay is very helpful in that regard. All right, so this covers much of what we needed to, I think, or everything. And so this is our first program that actually involves the PIC 10F200. And uh, although it's simple blinking, it already brings in a, some important ideas. Uh, later, when other projects, we will need to include the inputs. And once you have inputs and outputs, then what you can do with the PIC uh, even a very simple microcontroller like this really expands. And so we'll be looking at a bunch of different examples in, uh, throughout the labs uh, and, the, and the lectures that we talk about.